In 1981, Nike hired a corporate architect to design buildings in their Oregon campus, an architect by the name of Tinker Hatfield. In 1985, Hatfield would go on to design footwear under the Nike name, participating in corporate-wide design contests, including what he would later describe as a renegade set of shoes that were not part of a design brief or marketing drive. He would use his architectural background, drawing inspiration from buildings across the world, to impart a rebellious spirit into the struggling brand. While Nike had acquired an impressive 50% of the U.S. market share in athletic footwear, the competition from brands like Adidas were starting to creep back up. The waffle soles of their early models, along with Nike Air technology introduced in 1978 with the Air Tailwind, were setting the foundations of the brand. But the Air technology was thought of as a part of the sneaker that was meant to be felt, not seen, until one trip taken by Tinker in search of inspiration. Enter the Georges Pompidou Center, a controversial building in Paris, France that had the functional and structural elements on full display outside of the building rather than inside. To the Parisian public, it was considered an eyesore. To Hatfield, it was the inspiration he was looking for. In later interviews, Hatfield would credit this unpopular structure with his next design, believing that if he had not seen the building, he would never have suggested revealing the air pouch sitting in the midsole of the sneakers. Hatfield recalled, I thought, let's make the bag a little wider, make sure it's stable, but then let's go ahead and remove part of the midsole so we can actually see it. The design was provocative to say the least. Many believed that removing part of the midsole and exposing the airbag would make the sneaker look structurally weak and at risk for easy puncture. Hatfield described the reactions to the design in the Netflix documentary series, Abstract, The Art of Design, saying, It was widely discussed that I had pushed it too far. People were trying to get us fired. While Tinker had the confidence to stand up to the opposition within the company, no one would have predicted just how popular the shoes would actually become. The first iteration of the Air Max 1 was not without its flaws. The more exposed air unit was at risk of damage and puncture when exposed to colder elements, so a design change was made to decrease the amount of the visible air unit, but the popularity of the shoe did not falter. Exposing the air unit became a staple in Nike's running shoes, as well as countless other designs that Tinker Hatfield would later be tasked with creating. Today, 36 years after its first release, we have the chance to wear the sneaker that Tinker drew up, one that we almost never got in the first place. The Big Bubble Air Max 1 varies in a few ways from the Air Max 1 we are all used to, with its slightly elevated midsole, more prominent pointed toe, and of course, that bigger air bubble. The shoe pops on a white mesh upper with hits of red along the nubuck swoosh and mudguard, along with some red branding on top of the mesh tongue. The white laces are thinner to remain true to the original release, as well as that same waffle style outsole that put Nike on the map. My thoughts on this shoe come as no surprise. I'm a big fan. The history behind the design, the impact this sneaker has had on the world of athletic footwear, and the aesthetic simplicity make this shoe so special to me. We have seen plenty of iterations of this same shoe over the years, some staying true to form while others hint at the history behind the design, but this one gives us what we have not seen since the 80s, a larger display at what made the shoes so different from anything else at the time. If you're looking for a pair, I recommend going true to size. The toe box feels as though they widened it for a more comfortable wear, but otherwise it remains similar to your standard Air Max sizing. The flexible mesh uppers make this a comfy everyday sneaker, and that red mudguard makes them instantly recognizable. Personally, I like how the big bubble looks in this colorway, but I don't know if they should change the way they release their Air Max 1s going forward. In my opinion, this should be the only time they put such a big bubble in the Air Max 1 to keep this Air Max they release so special. However, if they decide to come out with that blue colorway, I will not be mad. Anyway guys, that's where I'm going to wrap up this video. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, this is Andrew signing off. Peace.